Once upon a time, Newark was a white city. Department stores like Bamberger's and Haynes catered to white shoppers. At the turn of the century, just 3 to 4 percent of the population was black. Then in 1910, the great migration of blacks from the south began. As blacks moved into northern cities like Newark, whites moved out. Newark historian Junius Williams says whites really took flight in the 1950s. The Federal Highway Department opened up highways leading from Newark into what then became the suburbs. Before that, there was the city and the country. Low-cost federal mortgages aided the exodus. Newark was 66 percent white in 1960, 34 percent black. By 2010, it was just 28 percent white and 50 percent black. In 1967, simmering tensions erupted in Newark. Some called it the riots. Others would come to call it the rebellion. Over four days, 26 people were killed, 1,600 arrested, looting ran rampant. Essex County Sheriff Armando Fontura was a rookie Newark cop at the time. When this happened, it was just totally devastated. It just, it broke your heart. You saw what was happening and you just, you were like in a state of shock because you knew the city was going to have a difficult time recovering from this if they were to recover from it. Before the rebellion took place, Route 78 came through the South Ward and wiped out the houses where these people lived who were living very comfortably. So that's the biggest factor. The second biggest factor was the rebellion. When it came, the remaining, just about all of the remaining Jews who were there left town. First, the Jews left the South Ward, then the Irish left the West Ward. Soon the Italians would leave the North Ward, leaving the Puerto Ricans, the Portuguese, and the blacks. The white flight, to be clear, had started. Had started particularly in the weak wake section you know, before the riots, you could see it. After the riots, the exodus, it just, to a point where it was just, oh, like on six months. Six months, less than a year, week week section was basically gone. You know, if folks couldn't sell their home, they just boarded them up and started to uh, escape. In the 70s and 80s, Newark suffered. Whites were afraid to venture into town at night. The Gateway office buildings were put up with a connector tube to Penn Station so commuters wouldn't have to touch the street. The exodus of white people meant that the businesses and the money left town. And when that happened, of course, jobs went away. Leah Bustan is a Princeton University professor and expert on the Great Migration. I look at 70 cities and think about them all together as a general pattern. And what I find is that when one black migrant moved into the city in the period after World War II, two to three white residents left the city. Some of them went to suburbs nearby, some of them left the region altogether. Why? Well, why people left when black migrants arrived is pretty complicated. Um, I think the standard explanation um, would just be a matter of racism. It also has to do with the fact that these black arrivals from the South were poorer than the existing residents. They may have needed additional services. Um, and there is this feeling of, I don't want to pay for someone else's kids. Whether that's an especially strong feeling when those kids look different from you, when those kids are black and you're white, you know, that certainly can be. 30 years later, Newark is on the rise. N.J. Pack was a catalyst, as was the Prudential Arena. The question now is whether white millennials are starting to move back into Newark in any significant numbers. Some people are coming from the suburbs, people who, young people who grew up in the suburbs but now seek an urban environment. Uh, they realize that Newark is much better than Short Hills for the kind of social life they want to have. At this point, at this point, I'm starting to feel much better and much more confident that I'm going to see this great city of mine in my lifetime. I'm going to see a return practically to its old glory.